Hey everybody, welcome to Epiphany Church. My name is Pastor Derek Parks and I have the privilege of serving here as the lead pastor. It is my privilege this morning to stand before you today uh, and bring the word of God for you. And so I'm just excited uh, about today because we're jumping into a brand new series called Equipped. And so as I look around the world today and as I look at the things that are going on, one thing that has struck my heart uh, and the spirit has been speaking to me is that the people of God need to be equipped. And so I want to invite you today on this journey with us as we look through the scriptures and as we look at the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives and we gather a sense of what it means to be equipped for the work of the ministry. And so we're going to dive in today as we look at this passage uh, in First Samuel chapter 10. And as we're looking at this passage, I, I want to let us know that this series is going to help us to be remove ourselves from the center of our of our life, of our spiritual life and place the spirit at the center of our spiritual lives as the one who is the giver of all good gifts, as the one who is deserving of all glory, as the one who is building up the body of Christ, as the one who is pointing the church in the direction that it should go. And especially in times like these, especially in times like these where the world seems to be going off on the fringes and everything seems to be spiraling out of control. We need a church that is equipped to handle the tragedies and the travesties of life. And we proclaim right now that we are going to be equipped for the work of the ministry. And so join me in 1 Samuel chapter 10. If you've got your Bibles, if not, we'll have it for you here on the bottom of the screens. Uh, in 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 6 and 7, I'm going to read for your hearing. Hear the words of our Father. It says that the Spirit of the Lord will come powerfully on you. You will prophesy with them and you will be transformed. Verse 7, he says to, to Saul, uh, this is Samuel speaking to Saul, he says that when these signs have happened to you, do whatever your circumstances require because God is with you. Father, I pray right now, God, that you would help us to understand this reality, God, and that we would be zoomed into this notion and know, God, that you have given us everything that we need and that you have equipped us, God, for the work of the ministry. And so, Father, I pray right now, God, that as we jump into this preaching moment, God, that you would be glorified, that you would be lifted up, God, that your enemies might be horrified, God, and that your great name might be proclaimed here in the city of Wilmington and abroad. So it's in Jesus' name that I pray all these things with thanksgiving in my heart, knowing that you'll do exactly what you said you would do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So as, as we look at this passage, we're, we're looking at a passage of scripture where, where Israel, God's people, they were longing for a king. And so as the people of Israel were longing for the for a king, they had just went through a period where they had some judges and, and now they had this prophet named Samuel. And so Samuel, he's here and Samuel has now grown old. Samuel was a prophet. He was a prophet uh, who followed God's ways. And now he's old and he sent his sons to be judges over the people. But the, his sons did not walk in the ways that their father Samuel walked. And so the people People began to complain and say, appoint for us a king because your sons are not walking in your ways. And so Samuel, he didn't think it was a good idea for them to do that. So he began to consult the Lord about what they should do. And as he consulted the Lord, the Lord instructed Samuel, he says, appoint for them a king uh, who will be their leader because they have not turned their back on you, Samuel, but they've turned their backs on me. And so God tells Samuel to go ahead and let them have what they want. And isn't that just like the Lord? Sometimes we get caught up in circumstances and situations and we think we should have certain things and we want certain things and we prayed and God asked God for it and pray and ask God for it. And God will ultimately grant us our request because he wants us to know that what we want is not always what we need. 
And so as we look at this, I want to help us get equipped this morning. I want to help us to understand that it is the Holy Spirit who is responsible for giving us what we need. And we, and, and the, the reality of that is this, is that the Holy Spirit knows what we need and he knows what's best for us, both, both personally and corporately. So uh, we, we must learn to trust the judgment of the Holy Spirit in his plan for our lives. And so I want to, I want to submit this idea to us today. I want to submit this main idea to us as Samuel. He, he went on to anoint this king. He went on to have an encounter with Saul, uh, this Benjamite from the smallest tribe in, in, in Israel and from the smallest people group there who, who he would appoint him to be the king. And this is his, his encounter with him. And during his encounter, he speaks these words to him. He tells him, he says that the spirit of the Lord will come upon you powerfully and you will prophesy and you will be transformed. I want to submit this idea is that God equips us with the Holy Spirit when he's called us to a great task. See, you've got to know this. You've got to know that the Holy Spirit is at work in you. You've got to know if you're a follower of Jesus, if you're a believer in Christ, you've got to know that the Holy Spirit has been imparted to you as a gift from God. And that's my first idea that I want you to know is that the Spirit comes from the from the Lord. Here, He says in verse 6, he says that the Spirit of the Lord will come to you. This word here for Spirit is, is a word that means simply breath. And breath refers to the very existence of a thing. So I want you to capture this notion in your mind that if something isn't breathing, then it isn't living. So in this passage, what we see is we see Samuel telling Saul that the very breath of God, the very thing that is sustaining, that should be sustaining people will come upon you. And so this passage is letting us know that the breath of Yahweh, the living God, is being prophesied by Samuel to enter into Saul. And so Saul here, as we see, when we look at this idea of breath, when we look at the idea of something breathing, what we begin to understand is that when you breathe the breath of the ever existing one, that's who the Lord is, Yahweh. He is the ever existing one. When you breathe his breath, when his spirit is upon you, you will have everything that you need. And so I want you to understand that, that, that Yahweh is the only being that can share his breath and not cease to exist. See, if you were to give your breath to somebody else, guess what? That means that for a time you wouldn't be breathing. And that's why when you go on the airplane, they tell you, guess what? They say, secure your oxygen before you assist somebody else. Because if you can't breathe, then you can't help anybody else breathe. But the spirit is saying to us today, he's saying, listen, that I want you to experience the full breath of me. I want you to experience all that I have. I want you to experience and breathe the life that I want to breathe inside of you so that you can do what it is that I've called you to do and be equipped. So in this season, I, I want us to see here, I, I want you to know that, that breathing the breath of God means that you have an unlimited source on the inside of you. See, God will never run out of oxygen. See, he, God never runs out of gas. He has power that is continual. He has power that is steady. So what that means for us is this, is that means that when the spirit of the Lord comes upon you, that you will have endless power to continue in the work that God has called you to. He told Samuel told Saul here, he told him, he says that the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of Yahweh will come upon you. See, when the spirit comes on you. It will allow you to advance. That's what this word here for come means. It means to advance something. It means to to push something forward. So he's letting them know that when the spirit comes on you, it will cause you to advance even when you feel empty. See, when the spirit comes upon you, it will cause you to advance even when you feel weak. 
When the spirit comes upon you, it will cause you to push forward and succeed even when you feel frail. And I know so many of us right now are feeling frail in our bodies. I know so many of us are feeling weak right now. So many of us are feeling a sense of unrest because of the unrest that is happening in our world right now. But I want to encourage you today to know that if the spirit of God is at work in you, then you have the power, then you've got the energy, then you've got everything that you need to advance forward with the work that God is calling you to. And so when the spirit comes upon you, here's the next thing that I need you to know. This is point number two, is that when the spirit comes, it comes with power. See, I, I, I wish I had some, some people who were listening. If you hear what I'm saying right now, just go ahead and throw some hands up in the comments right now. If you're hearing what I'm saying, I, I want you to, to, to drop some emojis down there and let me know that, you, that you're hearing what I'm saying. Because when the Spirit comes, guess what? It comes with power. It says in verse 6, Part B, it says that, that the Spirit will come powerfully on you. And you will prophesy with them. See, when he's saying here that it will come, this idea here of this word, it means that it will cause you to prosper or to make progress. And I want to encourage you. I want to let you know that the work of the Holy Spirit in your life is one of progress and prosperity. And I'm not talking like a prosperity preacher, but I'm talking about like a preacher who's been convinced that when the Holy Spirit is at work in you, then you have no other option but to prosper. See, in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 9, he says that, that the Lord your God will make you prosper abundantly in all of the work of your hands. Listen to this. He says your offspring, the offspring of your livestock and the produce of your hand. He says, indeed, the Lord will again delight in your prosperity. And he delighted in that of your father. See, God takes delight in his people prospering. See, God doesn't take delight in his people being oppressed. He doesn't take delight in his people being subjugated. He doesn't take delight in his people being being relegated to, to a lower class in society. He doesn't delight in that. What God delights in is he delights in his people prospering. John, the third John, in, in his epistle, he wrote, he says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul does prosper. And so I want you to understand this here. I want you to understand that working under the power of the Holy Spirit is the only way to progress in the things of God. See, if you're trying to work underneath your own power, guess what? You'll never be equipped for what God has called you to do. And so I want to challenge y'all today. I want to challenge you, Epiphany. I want to challenge everybody who's watching online. I want to challenge you to know that working on your own power will never get you there, but you've got to rely on the Holy Spirit and he will give you power. See, progress is marked by power. And we hear that echo and cry right now in the world is that if we're not making any progress is because we don't see any power attached to the things that we're working towards. And so without power, listen to me, there is no progress. And so I want you to see this here. He tells them, Samuel tells Saul, he says, listen, this is the word that's coming from God straight to Samuel for Saul's ears as he's being getting ready to be appointed as king over the people of Israel to a great work. He lets them know, he's saying, listen, that the spirit will come powerfully upon you. When the spirit comes upon you, it is important for you to know that when the spirit is at work in you, you have no other option but to succeed. And that's why it's important for us to be equipped. See, see, God is calling us to some things. Hear me. Listen to me really closely. God is calling us to some things in this season that require some power. See, see, if you think that what God is calling to you, you to in this season just requires you to have a good strategic plan, then you have missed the point. See, if, if you think that, that what God has called you to in this season just requires you to have a good business acumen, then you aren't working with what God has called you to do. See, the thing that God has called you to, if it's from God, guess what? You're going to need some power in order to accomplish it. And I want to encourage you to know that the power that you need is found in the spirit of God. 
See, one of the things here that it's important for us to know, and, and one of the things that God has called each and every one of us to in this season is to speak prophetically. See, he told, he told Samuel, he told him, Samuel told Saul, he told him, he said, listen, the spirit's going to come upon you and it's going to come powerfully <laughs> and you're going to prophesy. See, what happens here is the church has lost its prophetic voice in the culture. See, the church has lost its ability to speak prophetically into the culture and into the life of the world. See, speaking prophetically, I'm not talking about foretelling the future, but I am speaking of what my my pastor, Dr. Eric Mason, would say, foretelling telling the future. See, speaking prophetically to the culture means that you see the gaps in the culture and you call people to fill those gaps. See, speaking prophetically is an act of, of, of a covenant community of Jesus being called as the people of God with the gospel and the word of God and it calls them to look into the culture and it calls them to make some shifts and some changes and call for right action and call for right belief in the world. And so, but the church has lost its ability to speak prophetically in the world. And we have to gain our ability to speak prophetically once again. And guess what's going to allow us to do that? Is if we rely on the spirit and we receive the power that comes from the spirit. And in this series, listen, I'm going to help you understand how you can access some of that power. See, in this series, I'm going to help you understand how you get to tap into that power that you need in order to do what God has called you to do. Because in this season, we have to regain our prophetic voice in the culture. And if we're going to regain our prophetic voice, I'll say it one more time. We're going to need some power. But you can't access that power without the tools to access it. You got to learn how to pray. See, see, we, we don't, we don't, we don't want to talk about that. We just want God to give us power. (laughs) We would just want God to pour stuff down on us from on high, but none of us are willing to drop down on our knees to cry what's happening in our culture. We just expect things to just happen and we, we keep looking at prayer as if it's some kind of passive position and not looking at prayer as a position of power where we get to call on the God of heaven and ask him to act on our behalf. You can't access power of the spirit without studying his word. <laughs> Like you can't access this power without tapping into the source of the power. See, his word has power. And if you are a follower of Jesus, guess what you need to be doing? You need to be diving into the word of God every single day. There shouldn't be a day that goes by where you don't look at the scriptures to see and try to mine out some of the power that's in these pages. And so you've got to learn how to tap into and access the power of the spirit by using the tools that are at your disposal. See, I, I'm, I'm going to move on because I'm getting ahead of myself in the series. I, but I, I wanted to let you know some of the things that you need to do in order to access that power. But here's what you need to know. The first thing that I told you all is that the spirit is comes from the Lord. And also the next thing that you needed to know was that the spirit comes with power. But here's my next idea. I want you all to write this down. Uh, And I want you all to type this here uh, in in the comment section is that the spirit brings about transformation. See, the spirit brings about transformation. He told him, he told Samuel, Samuel told Saul, he said, listen, bro. He said, listen, when the spirit comes upon you, it's going to come powerfully and you will prophesy and you will be transformed. See, being equipped for the work of the spirit means that you understand that transformation needs to take place in your heart. See, you you can't be equipped for the work of the ministry. You can't be equipped to do what God has called you to do if you're not willing to be transformed in the process. You see, so many of us, we want we want to have God do a great work through us, but we don't want God to transform us to allow that work to come through us. 
And so, listen, being equipped for the work of the ministry here, what this word tra- for being transformed means, this word for being transformed has the sense of being overthrown. And see, what we need to realize and understand is, is that the work that God is calling us to, the great work of God that he wants to equip us for, it requires that our personal preferences and our ideas about how it should get done, those things get overthrown. And so what he's calling us to, he's calling us to a life of transformation. And when the spirit comes, guess what? It brings about transformation in your life. Now listen, I don't know about, about, about what's going on in your life right now, and but I can take a guess and understand that a lot of you are stressed out and frustrated just like I am about so many different things. But I hear so many people saying to me, listen, pastor, you know, I treated my spouse this way because I was stressed out. I talked to my kids that way because, you know, I was stressed. And my response in my heart and my mind is always this. Your stress shouldn't be stronger than the spirit. See, 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 so many of us act like our circumstances have more power than the spirit of God has. And I want to, I want to call you and urge you to know today that, that, that the same spirit, Romans chapter 8 verse 11 tells us, it says that the spirit who raised Jesus from the dead lives on the inside of you. So no amount of stress ought to cause you to act, act out of step with the spirit of God in your life. No amount of stress, no circumstance should cause you to act outside of the Holy Spirit working in your life. Because when the Spirit comes, it's got to bring about transformation in our lives. And I want to call us and challenge us to know that. And and hear this as, as as I'm going towards the end of this. The Hebrew here indicates that the Spirit would transform Saul into another man. See, when the spirit comes into your life, when the spirit is at work in you, people shouldn't even be able to recognize you. You see, when the spirit is at work in you, people ought to be confused about who you are and what's happening to you. And what they should see is not you, but they should see the resurrected Christ on the inside of you. And so listen, if your life has been marked by you just lashing out in stress, if your life has been marked with you never being able to accomplish some of the things that God has called you to, you've always just been walking the line of having potential. You've always just been walking the line of, of, of almost being all right. Like you, you, you just walk the line of almost having the things that you think you should and, 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 and being aligned with the vision that God has placed into your heart and you're just always missing it. It's because you have not allowed the Holy Spirit to transform your heart and your life. See, it, it tells us that we would be, tra- he would be transformed into a whole different person. And if the spirit isn't making you different, then it's not the spirit at work in you. If the spirit isn't making you different, if is it, if the spirit is not working in your heart to make you different, then it's not the spirit at work in your life. I'm sorry. It's not the Holy Spirit at work in your life. It might be some other spirit that you need to deal with, but the Holy Spirit is not at work in your life if it's not making you different. Last thing you need to know is this. Is that when the spirit comes, it brings the promise of God's presence. Verse seven says this says, when these signs have happened to you, this is Samuel talking to Saul. He says, do whatever your circumstances require because God is with you. People of God, as we walk in line with what the spirit of God is calling us to in the season. And, and, and many of us feel a great burden right now for God to do something powerfully through us. And, and I want to submit to you that the, that the unrest that is happening in our world, that, that the unrest that many of you feel in your heart, I want to submit to you today that God is speaking through this unrest. You just have to tune your ear to be able to hear what God is saying. 
And as you're walking through this, I want you to know he's telling me, he says, listen, when after the spirit has come and it's come powerfully and you begin to speak prophetically about things that are going on, he says, listen, do whatever your circumstances require because God is with you. And there are some of you today who need to know that. There are some of you today who need to understand and know that God is calling you to something and he's calling you to take some risk with some things. And he's saying to you, do whatever your circumstances require because God is with you. See, the promise of God's presence with you ought to comfort you. The promise of God's presence with you ought to ease your heart in towards transformation so that you could take the risks that God is calling you to take. And so I don't know what that is right now, but I just sense the spirit of God saying to some of you right now, go ahead and take the risk. Do whatever it is that your circumstances require because God is with you. And people of God, I want to challenge you to know today that the way that you can be sure that God is with you is that you place your faith and your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Once you place your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, you have this eternal promise from Jesus. He says that I will never leave you or forsake you. You have this eternal promise that nothing shall be able to pluck you from his hand. You have this eternal promise that he will be with you until the end of the age. And listen, I don't know what your background is. I don't know where you come from. But see, I grew up in a church and, and, and my auntie, she taught me that as long as I got King Jesus, everything's going to be all right. And so if you've got the promise of Jesus being with you, if you got the promise of the spirit that Jesus promised to his disciples, he says, I'm going to send you a comforter. And this comforter here, this Holy Spirit is the same one who was at work in raising Jesus from the dead. You can experience that same power right now today. You can experience that same comfort right now today. And you can be equipped for the work that God is calling you to in this season of your life. All you got to do is place your faith and trust in Jesus this morning. Jesus offers a better way. 2,000 years ago, Jesus, he went to a cross for us. And when he went to the cross for us, he, he hung up there on the cross, representing himself being Jesus, being God's picket sign to proclaim the, to, and, and to demonstrate against the atrocities of sin in the world. And so as he hung up there, he, he became the, the, the poster child for, for, for the wrath of God being quenched and, and he became sin for us so that God might see us as the righteousness of God. And so you can have that relationship with Jesus today. All you got to do is place your faith and trust in him. All you got to do is acknowledge and say, I believe and I want to follow you. And we've got a whole group of Christians who are ready right now to respond and to teach you about what it means to have a walking relationship with Jesus. So I want to pray right now and I want you to be blessed and I want you to know that God wants to equip you for every good work and he will empower you to do what he's called you to do. Take the risks whatever it might be, because God is with you. Father, I pray right now for your people, God. Bless them, strengthen them, encourage them. God, help them to know, God, that you are with them and that you are by their side. It's in Jesus' name that I pray, amen. Thanks so much for watching today. We love you. We're praying for you. Have a blessed day. Grace and peace.